everybody, it's Marla Martinson and you are watching another episode of Conversations with Cupid and I'm back today with sex expert Megan Fleming. Hey Megan! Hi! <laughs> so we wanted to do a quick video today about something that comes up in relationships and um, you know guys can get excited just by seeing some cleavage or a hot woman like there's no bad pizza they can have sex very easily with somebody they have no plans to have a relationship with or it's just for the night they can just have fun and detach themselves from that um, women tend to be a lot different and I just wanted uh, your your expertise and your take on what a woman really needs to to be in that space to have sex with somebody because sometimes the guys will think gosh you should just be right there uh, like me and I well, know there's right. another component emotions and brain and stuff so uh, enlighten us on that <laughs> okay well um, I think it's important to recognize for many women it's that feeling of connection especially there's a difference between a woman who's interested in a casual encounter and she too might be like you know, feeling sort of the chemistry of, of an attraction. But that kind of passion chemistry is kind of different when you're in a relationship because that's what's sort of meant to end. Um, and I think it's important to recognize for many women, you know, we often live busy lives. If I feel like I haven't seen you all day and we barely touch base all week, you know what, I'm actually not ready or wanting sex. Mm -hmm. You know, I first kind of want to hang out and feel connected to you. Exactly. And so uh, as, as the relationship goes along, you've really got it for men, because I really want this video, I'm going to, you know, put it out there for the guys to maybe help, help you guys realize, and especially as the women get older, uh, menopause is coming or after menopause, it's not as on, on the forefront of our minds. So what, what can they do to make sure that, that that part of their relationship doesn't wane because I think that's when the affairs can start or people can break up um, if they're not keeping the sex alive. Right. I mean, I think sex is like the glue in a relationship. Yeah. Um, and it's also, it's the hormones, right? That it's not only the dopamine, the pleasure, but it's the oxytocin. Mm -hmm. And that is sort of the attachment or the cuddle hormone. So, you know, I think although women often want to feel connected to have sex, it's actually through sex that men feel more connected. And I think when a couple finds that right balancing act, they're both getting what they need and it becomes sort of a flow. So I think men need to realize, okay, how do we create either, the, I mean, know your partner. I call it the golden versus the platinum rule, right? It's not do unto her what I want done unto myself. It's do unto her what would make her feel, you know, does she want to be seduced? Does she want to know how pretty and sexy she is? Does she want to be taken out? for you know, a surprise night on the town? Or does she just really want to, over a glass of wine, have a meal and just really look into each other's eyes? So knowing your partner and making sure you prioritize that. Yeah, exactly. And um, it, it's true. We get busy and, and we just don't think about it. But I know like when my husband takes me out or buys me a little gift or it's just you think of them in, in a different way other than just, you know, your nagging partner if, if they, you know, you've got all this stuff going on. And this is OK. This is a very interesting question. I was being interviewed by somebody the other day and I was talking about how oxytocin is kind of, that's how guys can get stalkers because, oh, if he just sleeps with a woman, she can bond and then keep, you know, why aren't you calling me back and stuff. And then the guy at the interviewer asked me, he says, well, because then we talked about menopause and he goes, now does that oxytocin ramp up in menopause? <laughs> and I said, you know what? I don't know. So does the oxytocin wane as we get older or what is the deal with the oxytocin and maybe just quickly explain what it is for people who don't know well it, it's sort of what we can refer to as the attachment hormone or the cuddle hormone and it is released um, through orgasm but also sort of caressing and touch I mean it, it goes back to you know with moms and infants and sort of those mirror neurons and it's 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 the eye gaze it's that closeness the, the connection um, you know what and it's a great question that I'm a PhD and I'm not an MD, so I would love to say, like, I already know that. I'm happy to get back to you. Um, <laughs> what happen in menopause, like your uh, adrenal glands is sort of shut down. Like the ovaries, you know, you get um, estrogen and hormones from the adrenal glands and the ovaries. So basically the ovaries are shutting down hormone production. So that's the biggest piece there. But that has more to do with estrogen and the testosterone versus oxytocin is more of a neurotransmitter like dopamine. So... 
you know, my assumption is it doesn't change, um, but right. I think the importance of it, I would say from the cradle to the grave, we're wired for connection from my perspective. Yeah, I even read a, read a uh, article about dogs, you know, man's best friend, how just they, they will gaze into your eyes, you're petting them, you're connecting with them, and they are getting a flood of oxytocin, and that's why they're so in love with uh, their owners, is that oxytocin that even all mammals have. And it helps you co-regulate your nervous system, right? Mm -hmm. So if you, again, are feeling disconnected or especially if you're in a fight, it's almost like no words. What's the level of connection I can handle? Can I actually just hold you and look into your eyes? Or if that feels too much, maybe just side by side we can hold each other's hands. And I would say, okay, if you need distance, because sometimes in an argument or you need distance, lay on your backs and have your big toes touching one another, right? So even with the distance that you need to take, make sure you're maintaining a level of connection. Okay, that's important. So, so really the takeaway here is to keep your marriage or relationship going as the years go by. Maintain connection, make time for each other to have those little dates, make each other feel special, uh, and, and do whatever you can to keep that sexual spark alive. Absolutely, and a piece I want to just bring in from Imago is, you know, you want to treat your relationship where it doesn't become ho-hum, I know you so well, like how do you create some some space, some distance, and, and then these things, we call it caring behaviors, you know, it's getting a cup of coffee, it's making the bed, helping your partner out, it's appreciations, letting them know, don't take them for granted, I really appreciate it when, yes. and then throw in those surprises now and again, because we like that novelty and that adrenaline, so those are the three things I would say are big takeaways, caring behaviors, appreciations, and throwing in the surprise. Okay, awesome. Megan, thank you for stopping by and enlightening us on this topic. Anytime. Bye.